Richard! Uh, I, I feel like hey, Richard. something of these moles, yeah, uh, uh, these moles Hello, that I have in my body. I got, hey, you know, exactly. I think that they started to, to flower more. Yeah. Let me listen to and you. Look at my nose. Look at, at, at my nose. Oh, this is where, as you could see, where I, I had once had a precancerous mm -hmm. uh, thing taken off. Is it no, any it looks different? pretty good. Looks, yeah. looks the same as it did before. And, and, and you don't have a light to look in my eyes? Because you know, you know, when you I look through you my just... eyes, you could see my, you could see the the court, you could see yeah, some. I of don't my... have that light with me. Today. Why not? It? Did you bring it to other patients? Where's your sink? Uh, in the toilet. Anyway, Richard, I think that you're you're fine, you're stable, you're a little anxious. But don't you think that I'm right that that something as traumatic and something as uh, monumental as a blackout, a blackout in fucking New York City, would affect the health of a population? I think it affects oh, the health of some people in New York City. Yeah. It doesn't affect the health of everybody. What well, affects your health? Been been... What affects your health? <laughs> when people don't you pay don't their bills. <coughs> exactly. Are you going to pay your bill this time? Anyway, I think really you're just very agitated. I'm sorry about the blackout. Everybody's sorry about the blackout. But I don't think it's going to cause any of your moles to transform into cancerous ones. Okay. Oh, that's very reassuring. It's, you know, my professional and opinion. Also, my, you know, my, my if, if you uh, want another consult, I'll bring someone else over. is a lot better. So? So? Now, you want to see me. How Just many, how, long, how, much, uh, how long in your uh, life have you want like to see this? Where like, I like, came from, baby. I like to, you know, walk in. What you got there, dude? But I, those guys, the old guys, like the Elwell, in Louisiana, they were all kind of fat, and they, they, they all smell good. They wanted Old Spice, and they had a lot of talcum powder. I don't know And they'd why. walk in, and they would, like, peel bills off Can like I, that. I, I always wanted wanna... to be one of those guys, man. <laughs> Women don't Jeez. think that this, smells what? nice. This is the bank stuff. The what? Okay. The stuff what is bank? this? You know, Are you okay. I initially was that. That's no big deal, is it? No. That's, no. that's just too council. Much it's council what? for Mideast. It's some kind of what? Okay. What? You're actually looking at what you're doing, right? Oh, shit. I don't get to I, oh, we need a, we actually, crap, we got to have then. kind of an office manager. You're not, I'm not being right. critical. It's just not your skill. That's not your particular talent. Your talent is creativity, not bookkeeping. Right. So you need to pay attention to what you're doing. I just. I know this is a chip I shot thing. But just, skip it you can't, the, uh, you know, you just can't mess around with this. All right. Okay, so you're all square. You excited about the new office? I'm, I'm thrilled, but I just want you right now, I want you to write this down. Schwarzenegger politically died today, August 27th. Is I, you know what? I'm going to start keeping a tally of all the times you're wrong. And, of course, and then we'll have a keep it separate uh, list of all the times you're spinning a spinner. So you know I, I, gonna, I have never Who's going to beat him? The I, aptly named Gray Davis? I, I, I've never said I'm always right. I've merely stated a fact. I'm just never wrong. When? How could you marry a man that did, is just has a sort of money-making predictive abilities and insights of one Jay Carville? Huh? I tell you, we, we are. Coming. You are the single weirdest individual in the world. You're like an uncle to me. Do you understand that? Um, You're like blood to me. Do you understand that? So what? So I mean, what? Yeah, so what? What I mean, do you mean, I'm so not what? Why, why do you think that I'm here? Why do you think that I've come 3,000 miles? Oh, because Why you, do you think that I'm relocating? Why do you think that I'm changing my life around? Where I'm talking with you about your disturbance. You're disturbed and are having a problem with wh where I've, I'm placing you and what I want from you. And, and then What I, do you want from me? I want you to tell me what's going on in my business. Via this cell phone. W or here you are with me right now. You want me to commute up to uh, New York City so that I can let you know what's going on in Washington, D.C.? you want me to send a car Because you can't you? come out of uh, I can't New York? come. That's, that's my condition. What is I your can, condition? How I do you define it? What is your here. condition? Uh, you know, if, if, if you can't do this or don't want to do this or if I'm uh, not or if I can't give you in your mind what you think or feel you need, then, you know, is that what you're saying to me? 
you know, maybe you need to uh, uh, rethink uh, doing this, you know? I mean, if, if you need uh, a title, if you need uh, a name uh, to validate yourself to people who are there, then we can talk about that. If you feel that you have to earn it in their eyes, but I don't care what they think. They have jobs to do. I employ them. You and I have a relationship. I'm employing you as well. I'm not interested, I can understand, I'm not interested in secret police, but I can't come out. I need you there. It's, you know, it's as simple as that. So, did you see the We magazine that just came out that reprints the Schwarzenegger interview? I told you, he's going to be, not only be the next governor of California, this interview is going to put him over the top. No beating him. Do you get freaked out by being in such close contact with men at the gym? Not at all. When I was playing soccer at the age of 14, the first thing we'd do before going out onto the field would be to climb up on one another's thighs and massage the legs. It was a regular thing. None of us had a thought about being gay. Absolutely not. And it's the same with most bodybuilders. Men shouldn't feel like fags just because they want to have nice looking bodies. I have absolutely no hang-ups about what the fag business. Nice. He calls it the fag business. That's so sweet. I know, it's really nice. Uh, Look, if she's a good fuck, she can weigh 150 pounds. I don't me? care. Yeah. 150? Yeah. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I thought. Jeez, that makes me, I don't know why. Oh, my boobs are 150. I don't know. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Hi. Oh, we're, mo we're moving. We're moving and I'm cursing too much. That makes you a bad fuck. <laughs> There's like people coming in and out of my office moving boxes. And I just yelled my boobs weigh 150 pounds. <laughs> and the way she has herself lit, I mean, there is a woman who just represents womanhood uh, to people. I mean, this is about people wanting to be in the middle class, I mean, something that we've all but lost here in America now. And how she's represented there in terms of her glamour, uh, it's just amazing. It's something that I just can't, can't stop watching. Here, I want you to make sure that Sophie Al Sabi gets this uh, today. She's having drinks with Tommy Flanagan uh, at the Iroquois Hotel this afternoon. See, see to it that she gets that. So, who's Sophie Al Sabi? Oh, she's an Arabic uh, operator. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You're having me carry this shit around town for you to Arab women operators. I don't know what's in this envelope. That's not necessary for you to know. But it's necessary for me to carry it for you because you're not going to come out of your house, so I'm going to be the one who carries well, your I shit. Can't. Oh. Well. I wonder if this is a uh, character deficiency on your part. No, it's simply questioning, what the fuck am I doing for you, Richard? You're helping me and working for me within my firm. I mean, What's whatever. In the envelope? It's just between Miss El Sabib and me. As far as. But you said that we have a personal connection, though. That's not personal. So you're going to let an envelope come between us? You think that that's come between us? I don't think that I that's think come so. between us. I think so. If I don't know the contents of an envelope that I'm delivering on your behalf, then I feel offended. I feel left out. I feel as if I'm being put in a position of great vulnerability. Okay. I hope this works for you in terms of your fears and concerns. Here, very... Uh, important stuff, confidential, uh, highly prioritized. It's the sexual activity of uh, the President of the United States. There's nothing, okay? <laughs> but you have to trust me. Um, now, do you feel a little better? So what do you do? You, you put lemon juice on it? Oh, my God. I tell you something. One of the things I miss most about coming into the office is that when I would come into the office, sometimes I'd get those scratchers and these lottery tickets and yeah. I'd have them made up and I'd sort of pass them out or give them away or, or let people sort of get them in their own way and just sort of watch people uh, scratch them out and have a winning number. 
Uh, it's a little mean, you know, but I mean, it, it relieves my tension and my pressure. I, I, I'm paying everybody's salary. You're working for it. Everybody is earning what they're doing. There's a lot of pressure on me, which is one of the reasons that I can't come out. But I, I do miss some of the good times at the office. I, I have to say that. How are you? Good. Good, good. Hi. Good afternoon. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, thank you. I have this uh, for one of your guests. Okay, you sir. I take care of this. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good day. Okay, I will meant Thank you. <laughs> okay. Boston wasn't hit either. That's right. But and Connecticut wasn't. Yeah, because my... Uh, but New York, New York was. Yeah, and Connecticut wasn't either. That's right. Right. That's right. It was so strange. That is actually another reason why I thought it was terrorist related. Because it was just pockets of. Uh... Because it was pockets. But then, you know, Washington probably should have fit into yeah. that pocket yeah, yeah, if yeah. that was going to yeah. be the case. Yeah, no, my friends were a little freaked out, though. Mm. Because, you know, because the, the, the Con Ed thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the fire. On... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So. Uh, there were a couple of things I was going to bring up with you today, and one of them was um, that the council uh, is working with the firm mm -hmm. on the ground in Saudi, mm -hmm. and they are sort of the the um, the public face of reform. They're a right. public relations PR group, and what we, uh, what the council would really be interested in is if you would work with them, and we're, you know, sure, that's what we do. Yeah, I mean that's. Exactly what we do. I mean, because there's I think it could, be, could be, a, um, a, it'd be really useful to them f to have your experience, and also right. I think it'd be you know interesting and useful for you to you know learn from them uh, how they're going to proceed in their own process. But it's a great time right now for us because we have a great sense of optimism about what's happening in Saudi, and we have a great. Excuse me, man. This is for you. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, and we, we feel would be happy to work with the council's firm yeah. in, in on the ground there. That we, we do it all the time. Various I mean, countries, whatever firm. That's terrific you know. because you see the thing is that it is a crucial time. I mean, we are hoping that sometime in the near future they're going to be announcing municipal elections, mm -hmm. and so it's critical that we do the best job that we can. And your assistance in that would be great. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey. Hey. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thank you. How was the trip up? It was good. It's a tough day. Yeah, the whole thing's gonna be tough. Where you said the cock is not a muscle. I call you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you read that? Yeah, I just skimmed it. About, <laughs> about <laughs> the proportions, and did, was his penis in proportion to the rest of his body? And he he took it seriously. The question and started explaining how the cock is not a muscle. Governor Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> and so, right. did you read the article in the New Yorker about JFK? About how when he used to, he used to, I, this one is like, this is news to me. Apparently he, when he was having sex with women in the bathtub, he would have sex with them in the bathtub. And as he's about to, as he's about to come, he would shove their head underneath the water. So they would like, you know, panic and, Contract. How do you know this? Well, I read it in the New Yorker. Who knows that? Oh, I don't know who knows it. They wrote it in the <laughs> New Yorker. Come on. It's reputable. But, Look, who yeah. knows? <laughs> it's good reading. Did somebody's grandma tell them? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when I was <laughs> young Philly. <laughs> in the bathroom. <laughs> the White House. I mean, that's unbelievable. I'm just saying I'm, I read I'll, it, I'll, yeah. I mean, I, okay, I can't. It. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just forget that. This is, this is insane. I'm sorry. Let's... I want to talk about the, what we're going to do on uh, Labor Day. So we met our first time. If you, if you get this, the, our first date was January eighth, nineteen ninety one. That's right. You know, and do you remember what a let you were? I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> you know what you said to me just to have a flashback, which I've been meaning to. Ooh. Trust you with a dessert. Thank Care you. Sharing. It's fabulous. Okay, this is Good really stuff. disgusting. I hate your hair, but I like your blouse. Or more precisely, what's under it. That's a really lecherous thing to say. What would you say if somebody said that to one of your daughters? Well, I mean, if they were... And I don't know what was wrong with my hair. My daughter was... 37, 38 years old, <laughs> because she could probably take it by then. I mean, if she was, you know. You know what your marriage proposal was? Do you remember what? this? My, f do you, seriously, my family is coming up for Christmas, so maybe we should get married then. I think I said that I had been waiting 49 years for the perfect woman, and I had completely given up hope, <laughs> and was in utter state of despair. And you, you walked so into all my of life no. and you blew so me completely away with your charm, your wit, your intelligence, your passion, and I'm, You did I like just, me, Mr. Spinner. You did actually like that's me. That's what I really did. As like. I liked you, Winsley. But what you really said was, I never met a woman that was as much like my mother, which is a very bad sign. Well, you know what? It was true. Does that sound healthy to you that you've married your mother? I don't know if it's healthy, but it sure in the hell is fun. Did I tell you, I just, first, thanks for coming. I mean, I think this is a nice coincidence that we're good. both having to be in town out. at the same time. Yeah. I know, it worked out nice. I thought because of the blackouts that we were not going to be able to do this, you know? So I would have canceled it if the blackouts were going on. It's way, way too hot in August in New York. Did I tell you, I just went to Broadway yesterday. Oh, you did? I saw Antonio Banderas in nine. Oh, yeah. Wow. How was it? Maybe because I'm a woman, I don't know, but it really did it for me. <laughs> it was really? really good. Yeah. No, I... Which I know. Are you? Raul really? Julia was the original character, and I just wanted to see it with Antonio what Banderas. Would you have done if he saw you in the audience and said... Did you pack your bags? And my mother used to say that would. No, come she saw on. Camelot with Richard Burton. Joe. She said I would have brought. I, she, if he had called me, I would have packed my bags and left with him. No, Did you no, left no, Joe? No, no, of course I would not have left Antonio Joe. Antonio Banderas has nothing on Joe. You have three days, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I just want to hang out with you. I don't even care. This is whole. This whole thing is just been really fun. I'm really. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I'm glad. I'm, I'm being glad because I was a little, you I'm know, concerned goofy. for you. No, but you just look great. Right and well, you can thank you. Turn me on. And yeah, I I completely <laughs> love you. I am completely digging you. This is really fun. So, so really anything. I'll do whatever this weekend. I just can't. It's really weird. It's just too much to really even think about. So here we are, another adventure. You ready? We're ready to go. You ready? We're ready. You ready? All right. Is it fight zone? That's it. Did you read their article in Wee Magazine? I did. Watch with the group sex. That guy's a wildcat. It, it, doesn't, he, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Arnold is not going to win. There's no way Why you he think that? Because he can't debate, and, and McClintock will never get out. He's an and actor. He's too liberal for the GOP. He's, he's, he's pro-choice. He's pro... He's, he's perfect. Pro he's a Democrat he's and Republican pro, loincloth. You know, I think it's perfect. Be a little, little fiddly. He's anti-gun. He can't, he can't win. I don't be so sure. I'll bet you. I'll bet you $1,000 that Arnold doesn't win. Cash? Cash. So what you say? You want to go upstairs? You tired? Well, um, the um, <laughs> it's, I was going to say that um, what? There's this. I just want to give you a warning. There's a chance that on. I do have that weekend off, but there's a chance I have to come in, and I'll find out for sure from my boss or whatever that I might have to come in and do extra work for the, the show and oh, stuff. Really? But yeah, I yeah, but I'll I'll find well, we out as stay, soon as well, let's possible. Let's just stay in town then. Let's not even. Yeah, I might have to do that. And let's stay in town and just hang out, and then we'll you know we can rent movies, and then if you have to well, go to work, if you then. understand that. That's because yeah, I, I God, just realized really. you know I'm not on like a normal. No, I um, get it. Um, work thing, so. <sighs> That's fine. Go to the bathroom now? Mm hmm. <clears throat> Anna.
checking out of uh, 504. Thanks, Perfect. guys. Thank you, Ms. Flanagan. Leave it on the same credit card, sir? Yeah. No, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, see you soon. Ms. Flanagan. Hi. How are you? Let me introduce myself. My name is Jack Folster. I'm with the FBI. Could we talk to you for a few minutes? What's this about? It's important, and we don't want to talk in the lobby. We don't want to talk in the lobby. Can we discreetly step over here and have a talk? Okay. Well, just give us a few minutes of your time. Just so you know, we're for real. Now, it's mine. Let me tell you why we pulled you over. We're working a pretty sensitive investigation right now, and, and uh, we're hoping that maybe you can help us out and point us in the right direction. Does the name Sophie L. Sabi mean anything to you? What? Who? Sophie L. Sabi. 